The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Safina Insecticide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Welcome to Real Agriculture Soybean School Series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. In this episode, I talked to John Gavlowski, who is the Provincial Entomologist with Manitoba Agriculture. John gives us a bit of an update on grasshoppers and soybeans across the province, and what some of the options are that producers have when it comes to control of the hoppers. So as far as staging goes, uh, grasshoppers go through, uh, when they hatch out as in, from the egg, Usually that's happening in late May and throughout June. They're about the size of a wheat kernel and they go through five juvenile stages and with each stage they're getting a little bit bigger and their wings are starting to go from just a little membrane that you can barely see to what we call wing buds that you can see but they're not fully developed and they can't fly in any of these juvenile stages. When they become an adult, they've got fully developed wings and then they can fly. So what I can do is first show an adult grasshopper and then we're going to look at a juvenile with wing buds and compare the difference. So these are two striped grasshoppers, one of our main pest species. And I've just pulled an adult. And if I don't break his legs, we will have a look at the wings here. So this is called a two-striped grasshopper. It's got two stripes that start right behind the eyes, and they come right to the back of the wings. These wings are fully developed, so if you see the wing, it goes right to the back of the body, covers the abdomen. So adult grasshopper, this one can fly. Uh, two-striped grasshoppers, they can come in brown or green. They've got different color morphs. So they might look a little different depending on the, uh, the species. But yeah, adult two-striped grasshopper. Now for juveniles. So this guy here, also two-striped grasshopper. But notice wings, they're just little buds in behind the thorax. So these wings come maybe a quarter of the way down the back. They're not totally covering the abdomen like the adult was. So this one is called a fifth instar, meaning it's in the fifth stage of development. The next stage is adult and it can fly. But on the juveniles, again, you can see wing buds, partially developed wings, can't fly with them. This guy can just hop. So they can only move in very slowly. And this one does have two stripes as well, but they're black and they're on the thorax. So that's two-striped grasshopper. Our other dominant species this year is migratory grasshopper. A little bit different. So this is a migratory grasshopper, adult. Uh, what's different about this one, it doesn't have the two stripes down the back. It's got a black mask in behind its eye, a little black band in behind the eye. Uh, so that's one of the things that you can use to identify it by. It's got a series of very small black rectangles or squares on the wings as well, kind of randomly patterned. And they do have uh, some black, almost V-shaped things on their back legs. So you can use them to tell migratory from two-striped grasshopper. So the third one that I mentioned, by the way, there's, a, there's three major pest species here, two-striped and migratory that we looked at. The third one's called clear-winged. It doesn't have clear wings. It's got black dots on its wings. So that's how you can tell from the other two. It's a grass feeder. The other two feed on a lot of things. Now for control options, um, as far as chemicals go, you've got brand baits, you've got various insecticides, and you've got various strategies where you can apply insecticides. So brand baits, uh, they're most effective on juveniles, but they can work on adults. They have to be spread versus sprayed. Uh, so you can use something like a Valmar to apply them. As a juvenile, one or two flakes will kill the grasshopper. As an adult, it takes about four or five flakes. So higher rates are needed. Um, for sprays, there's various products. They have various residuals to them. So there's a lot that growers can choose from. This time of year, they have to keep in mind pre-harvest intervals. Some products, you just can't use them when we get into late July and August because the pre-harvest interval is too long. Um, one technique that people can use for grasshopper control, uh, particularly in pastures or lower value crops, is called reduced area and agent treatments. And the way this works, 
instead of spraying your whole, we'll, get, we'll use a pasture as an example, instead of spraying the whole pasture, you would spray in strips. 50% or you do a, a pass that's treated, a pass non-treated, etc. So you're basically spraying half your pasture instead of a full pasture. When they did research on this in Wyoming, they used three different products. Uh, with a moderate residual product, they went down from about 94% control, where they did a whole pasture, to about 81% control, doing 50% of their pasture. When they used a very high residual product, they got 98% control doing the whole pasture, 92% doing it in strips. So basically they, they uh, spent half the money, applied half the chemical, and only got a 6% reduction in grasshopper kill. So that might be a strategy for people who are potentially treating a pasture or rangeland, want to use a more high residual but more costly product, but want to somehow keep the cost manageable. So, so far this year, I'll say it's been moderately high. Um, we've, we have had worse years, but the, so uh, I won't call it an outbreak, but there's certainly very high levels and there's been a lot of spring. Uh, a lot of edge spring early on, so a lot of grasshoppers will lay their eggs where there's lush green vegetation in late August and September. So that's not usually a cereal field, that's the roadside ditches. So often there's this invasion from the ditches into the fields. It usually starts late June or July. A lot of people will spray the ditches and the field edges in late June, early July to avoid that invasion. Sometimes that's all you need. Other times, if they've already invaded the field or they've hatched out in the field, you have to do the whole field. So there's been both happening this year.